The U of L researcher has found that people who suffer heart failure and need an artificial heart assist device don't necessarily need that artificial assist for the rest of their lives. Dr. Emma Burks is a professor in the School of Medicine at U of L, and she's sitting right in front of me, and we're going to talk about this. Welcome, Dr. Burks. Hi, thank you. All right, we'll talk about first off heart failure. Uh, how many Americans have heart failure, or Kentuckians have heart failure um, right now? Let, let's start with the broad concept here, and then you can talk about your device and what you found. So a lot. It's very, very common. Actually, it's one of the most common causes uh, of admission for cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease, as you know, affects about a third of people, uh, and heart failure affects about uh, six million or more. Actually, it's, wow. it's huge. Yeah. That's a bunch of folks. Okay. Yeah. And so you've you've done a study now to figure out how you might be able to uh, folks that suffer heart failure might be able to get back on on track so what if you what'd you look at and what'd you find yeah so people in the early stages of heart failure we try and treat with pills and most respond to that but some don't respond and they continue to get worse and worse despite that and the medications aren't working uh, so the way it used to be is they would go on to get a heart transplant which is still probably the best thing but there aren't enough donors now so increasingly we're putting these heart pumps in which now have uh, much better outcomes patients go home on them they live much longer. Uh, there is a complication rate, but it's lower. Uh, so far more people are getting those that can't wait for transplant, and people that aren't even transplant candidates can get them too. So we noticed that on these pumps, the hearts would start to get better. You would rest, it effectively rests the heart. The heart starts getting a bit smaller, and the function starts perking up a bit. So we started using a very aggressive uh, regime of just pills that go with that. So we combine ag aggressive pill therapy with the heart pump. We optimize the speed of the heart pump, and we start testing the heart function to see how it's doing. Uh, so whereas people were probably not tolerating all these pills beforehand because they had poor output from the heart, the kidneys weren't well enough perfused, their blood pressure was low, suddenly with the pump they tolerate the medication very well. So we use very high doses of the medication plus the pump. And with that we found it, it can be good enough to take the heart pumps out and avoid the heart transplant altogether. And most people stay like that for a long time. They could need transplant later on, but most, most don't need it altogether. So right now out of these millions of people that have heart failure, uh, what percentage of them are in the ballpark have uh, have a transplant? I mean, you said there's not enough hearts to go around, basically, but uh, what? How many folks do have a so transplant? So there are two and a half thousand transplants in the U.S. worldwide, and about three and a half thousand worldwide. So that's only a thousand in the rest of the world combined. Uh, in terms of the heart pumps, there are about four thousand going in in the U.S. per year now. Okay. So we focused on people with normal arteries to their heart um, who have heart muscle disease. So we focused on that group first off, which is probably about half of those patients having heart pumps. So we've looked at a select number just in our institution. A few other institutions have done the same thing. And now we've had this study where six other places, six places in total, are following our protocol and doing that. So it's a relatively small study we did, but we've got encouraging results. But right now, if I get a heart pump put in my, my body... I assume you, you implant it, right? It's an implant? I don't, yeah, I don't even know right. what a heart pump is. Maybe yes, I ought to explain that, what it that's is. That's right. So the pop, heart pump goes inside your, inside your body. So it goes to the failing bit of the heart is called the left ventricle, the main pumping bit. So it does the pumping of, of that for it. And it. So it takes blood from that failing bit of the heart, and it takes it back to what's called the aorta, which is the main blood vessel that supplies the body. So it sits alongside your own heart and does the work of your heart for you. But it needs to be powered by something. So it has an electrical cable that comes out the skin. Otherwise, everything else is inside, and then you walk around with batteries and a power pack and you literally set the speed and rev it up and down and you have to change the batteries every eight hours you plug in at night uh, <laughs> but otherwise you can kind of go on as normal except it does need blood thinners and you have to address the line that comes out okay daily. so so most people are getting right now they're getting uh they're getting one of these heart pumps they and they right now I assume, have to leave it in for the rest of their life, correct? So they have it with one of two intentions, either to okay. bridge them to a heart transplant or they have it as what's called destination therapy, which means they're going to stay on it lifelong. Okay. And they're the two intents right now. But this, our work suggests that there may be another option for some of those patients, which, as we call, to bridge them to recovery. Right, and, that, and that's the, the, the gist of your research was that you, could, you found that drugs, a heavy dose of drugs, yes. along with the heart pump, it could get me back that I could lose the heart pump at some point, yeah, correct? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Okay, that's the whole idea. Yes, that's right, All yeah. Right. We're talking with Emma Burks, who's a doctor at the University of Louisville, and uh, she just completed this study about, and it's called LVAD, right? Drug therapy and an LVAD, or is it? Or? It's called a restage, so that's a remission from, from uh, advanced heart failure, remission from stage D heart failure. Stage D heart failure is the worst heart failure. Okay, all right, I got you. And 
you, you've done it on a handful of patients, you said. Small number, yes. We've done it on 40. Well, at Jewish Hospital, we've taken out 28 heart pumps now. And in the study, uh, some of those are in the study, then we've done uh, 40 patients throughout the six centers in the U.S. Mm. So we have uh, University of Utah, uh, University of Pennsylvania, Cleveland Clinic, University of Nebraska, and Montefiore have joined us doing the same thing. Well, that's... Uh... <laughs> pretty impressive group of uh, folks yes, that you got good. working on this crowd, yeah. but you've only done uh, like you said a small group so is there more clinical studying that you have to do before this ever gets to the market and if so what are we talking about here how long yeah, so we just focused on one pump, and then you have to follow them for a period of time. And we wanted to follow them for initially a year's follow-up and then three years' follow-up, so it's taken a while. So now we need to do it in a bigger group. Um, we need to uh, slightly update the drugs we use, but pretty similar drugs. Uh, and then we would like a strategy to actually, what we do is we shrink the heart down and get it as small as possible, get the function as good as possible, and then take the pump out. But it would be nice after we do that to have a second drug that we add to actually thicken the heart a little bit to make sure that that uh, to make sure that the uh, recovery lasts longer that would be our next phase of the therapy well, this sounds like something with the Grinch who stole Christmas here the, uh, the his, <laughs> yes. his heart grew three sizes that day um, yeah, so, right. so you're controlling the size of the heart yeah so the pump will literally shrink the heart so it's uh, almost like a vacuum cleaner that you put in the left side of the heart that sucks the blood out and sends it around the body but it also shrinks the heart too partly just due to rest and partly due to literally sucking it down and then the medications we give shrink the heart too and the way they work on the cells and all that improve the heart function and, and it worked in, I think, 40% of the uh, patients that so you tried far, it so 40%. far? So far, 40%. The study's ongoing, so we still may have more that come out. We don't know. We're kind of in the middle of it. But so far, just over 40% have had it out, yeah. So close to half. You could, you put the heart pump in, you gave them the drug doses, and eventually you took the heart pump out. Yes, that's right. So how long a period of time uh, between when you put the heart pump in, you give them the heavy dose of these drugs, and you could take it out? How long a period of time? We so we gave about? a period of 18 months to get it out. The average has been, overall, it's been an average of a year, but it's been anywhere between the six months and the 18 months. Months. And I think in the future, we wouldn't have that 18-month cutoff because some that have gone beyond the 18 months are still showing signs. So probably the 18 months was kind of irrelevant, really. All right. So what's the big picture here? Uh, what's the hope for those who have heart failure? So this has been done in a very small number so far. So we also have to, and people with normal arteries and weak heart muscles. So we have to try it in other disease groups, those that have had heart attacks and, and narrowed arteries. Uh, and then the, uh, the hope is that as the transplant number is so limited, we could apply this to more people getting LVADs because a lot are getting LVADs now. Uh, and then we could get the pumps out and uh, avoid, avoid the heart transplant and give them longer. The heart pumps are very good, but they do have a complication rate. So to have another, ch another opportunity for these patients and everybody would rather just be on their own heart with time right and and that complication right did those complications with the with the heart pump happen quickly and immediately as soon as it gets put in or is that a thing over over a long period of time like 10 months in i might develop those complications it's variable most of it happens over with time the incidence increases over time few happen early but most most with time so the quicker you can get that a heart pump out, the better and the less chance you have of developing some complications. Yeah, and particularly for the younger patients and all patients, you want to look at the total lifespan. So if you can have the time on the pump and then time without the pump, and even if they don't last forever, you can then potentially go to a heart transplant later. You can really prolong life quite a bit. That's our goal. Wow. And the other thing we can do with it is we can sort of study heart failure a bit. When you take the pump in, you make a, put the pump in, sorry, you make a hole to put uh, in the muscle, so you get a bit of muscle, and then you have all the detail on the patient, all their, their pressures, all their echo data, etc and then you slowly improve the heart function you have serial echoes and tests as you go and then you can take more tissue and, and blood when you when you uh, take the pump out so you have a model for the reversal of human heart failure so you can study that and look for potentially discover new molecules and new drugs and i assume um, this research will continue at the university of louisville correct yes that's right that's what we're 